Low sex drive. I have been seeing women talk about this for quite some time now. It's something that I could not relate to and was not ever really ever experiencing before. Um, I've been married for three years, but in the last year, and again, I don't know if it has anything to do with all of the hormones that I'm on and taking and going through all of the ups and downs that I have been since starting IVF, but I have been experiencing low libido and I could have never really imagined how that can affect a woman. I can imagine how it can affect a relationship. I can imagine that it can affect a marriage, which is difficult, but I never really expected it to affect me in this way. It's not an everyday thing. It's not an every week thing. It's like in chunks of time where I just have absolutely no interest in sexual activity. Like, I just feel like I could completely live without it. I don't think about it. I don't crave it. I don't um, feel any kind of sensitivity in my body, if that makes sense. My body just kind of feels like empty. It makes me feel less womanly and it makes me feel not sexy and it makes me feel super weird. Just having low sex drive and low libido, it's so important to have good communication with your partner. I encourage you to be as open as you can about this subject. It's the best thing that you can do. You're going through such a weird thing in your body, and I am too, and it's really so difficult to explain. So the best thing that you can do is be honest. Um, I'm really honest with my husband about everything that I experience as far as my PCOS symptoms and having low sex drive and just feeling not myself. And I'm so lucky to have him because he has been understanding and patient and willing to work through these things that I'm experiencing with me. But he would not be able to do that if I wasn't honest with him and telling him all of those things. So. We can't expect our partners to be understanding if we don't express everything that's going on with us to them. So please be open and please inform your partner about what you're going through. And I'm talking about all the details because if you really love that person and that person loves you, um, they should be understanding and they should be willing to try to understand if they don't get it at first. All right, so last one on the list of my long list of PCOS symptoms is hair loss, receding hairline. I've struggled with having a big forehead for my whole life, so the fact that my hairline is now receding is not making me very happy um, because now my forehead is getting bigger, so that's great. I'm gonna clip right here where I can show you where I'm losing hair in my hairline. All right, I'll show you guys what I mean about receding hairline. So, this was not like this before. It was like lower. I don't know if you can see it, but these hairs that are short here, it's like growing back. There's a little bit of hope. I'm pretty sure I finished this list finally. Um, I felt like I was talking forever about so many negative things, but I mean, I really hope that this can help anyone who is struggling with the same things. Um, if you can relate in any way, I would love for you to leave me a comment to let me know to help me feel like I'm not alone in this situation either and I hope that this video can do the same for you. Um, as always, thank you so much for all of your support. If you're interested in following along on me and my husband's journey with infertility, please hit subscribe. And if you like this video and would like to see more like this, give it a thumbs up. That's all I got for today. I will see you guys soon.